Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about enums. If you're already familiar with them, this may not be the video for you, but if you've never used them before, I'm going to go over the basics and then dive into a semi-real world example of how you would use them. So on my screen here, you'll see we've got this one file, this damage type, with public enum damage type. And some people also call this enum, short for enumeration. I don't think how you pronounce it really matters and enum seems to be more popular. So that's just kind of what I go with. So here you'll see that we've got this public enum damage type and it has three values, cold, fire, and physical. And if I put my mouse over, you see we actually get a tooltip there. So it says fire equals one, cold equals zero. And that's because this is the first one in the list. So it gets index zero, it's programming. So everything is zero indexed. And one gets fire and two gets physical. Now I can optionally override these values. So I could set cold equal to five, and then you'll see the fire becomes six, physical becomes seven, but I could even skip and go fire equals eight, and then physical will become nine and so on. And it'll just kind of auto increment from whatever point we've put in there. Normally, I don't need to do that, but there are cases where things are mapped to maybe a database entry or some other data where there's just a number there, and I want the number to stay static and not change. In that case, I will assign the ID, or if they're already kind of assigned from something outside of my actual program. In this case though, very simple, we can just go zero, one, two, and keep it like that and not have to worry about it. So what are these, what is this for? Why the hell do we have a enum damage type? Well, let's take a look at our project. So here we've got a nice empty, ish project and in it we've got an enemy and we've got a weapon and then under the enemy we've got some damage text and that's just going to show when we do damage of different types it'll show that damage going up over the enemy's head our enemy is this beautiful little cube so let's take a look here at the weapon our weapon script has a single field on it it's got this damage type enum that's a drop down so i can pick whichever damage type i want my weapon to do let's open up the script so here you'll see that we just have a serialized field of type damage type named damage type with a lowercase d because this is the instance of my enum. And in our update, we check to see if the fire one button was pressed. That's just a left click or what is that, left control or a button, depending on what you're using. Most of the time though, it's just left click. And then we find the enemy in the scene. There's only one enemy. So right now we're just being lazy and searching for it whenever we fire. We're calling take damage on the enemy and passing in a damage amount of 10. This could probably be a serialized field for the amount. In fact, let's do it. Damage amount. Let's just convert that into a serialized field. So we'll put that there. We'll choose generate field. Let it automatically generate. Add that serialized field attribute. Quick copy paste. And then give it a default. I'm going to set the default to 10. So we're telling this enemy that it's going to take 10 damage of whatever damage type we have assigned here. Remember this is in the inspector once it recompiles. It's this damage type right here. So that's what we're gonna pass into our take damage method. So let's look at the enemy's take damage method and why it matters what damage type we have. Well, actually let's just take a look at the enemy. So the enemy has max health and current health, pretty simple. And then in on enable, we set our current health to the max health. So it's just when our enemy gets created or spawns or we toggle it on and off, we reset the health. And then it has a reference to a damage text object that we'll show in a moment. And this take damage method, as well as this right here, this array, or I said array, that's not an array. It's a dictionary of damage types to floats named resistances. So the idea here is that this enemy can resist different types of damage by different amounts or different percentages. And here you'll notice I'm also using the Odin serialize and we're even using serialized mono behavior. And that's just to make it a little bit easier to see and not have to scaffold a bunch of UI stuff for our resistances. I wanted to make it so we can go in, put resistances in and have them save on our enemy and then use those without adding too much extra code. So let's take a look at the enemy itself. Here we go, we've got the enemy selected and the enemy script here, because I have that Odin serializer in here, it's showing my resistances as a dictionary of entries and values. And I can add in another one if I had another damage type. In fact, let's do that. Let's go in and add a damage type because I think that would be helpful. So to add a new damage type to this system or this game, 
All I have to do is go to the damage type enum and add an entry here. So maybe I want to add poison. Now I've got a poison damage type and I'll be able to select it from my weapon. So once this recompiles, I'll go to the weapon, we'll switch it over to poison any second now, and then we'll add in a poison resistance. So here we go, we switch over, now poison's an option, and if I go to my enemy, I can hit plus right here, Again, this is part of the Odin Inspector, and then choose poison and give it a percent. Let's say it resists 25% of poison damage. So what is this all doing? Well, let's take a look. Let's hit play and see it in action, actually. So we hit play, and when I click, you see two damage happened, two damage happened. Every time I click, we're taking two damage. Now if I change the weapon, and I change this to maybe fire damage, click, now we're getting five damage because this is a fire spell or a fire damage type. And if you look at our enemy here, his fire resistance is at 50, so it's resisting 50%. We go back to the weapon, and if we go to cold, we should see zero. You may notice also it turned blue, that text. It's no longer red. And if I change to physical, you can kind of see the text there. It's white. Let's change the background clear flag. Let's go to a solid black. There we go. So now you can see 10 damage because I have no physical resist on this character. It, or the, uh, the damage percent is 100. So it's actually taking 100%. It's taking 0%, taking 50%, or taking 25%. I guess my resistances are kind of backwards from how you would normally think of them. It's more of just a multiplier. So let's take a deeper look at the text now. See how the text is changing color based on the damage type? Remember, if I go back to fire, it's doing it red and blue. It was going to blue, or sorry, cold, it's going to blue. Kind of what you would expect. And how does that work? Well, look at the damage text. And here you'll see we just have a standard text mesh pro text and it's on a world space canvas under the enemy but we have this basic damage text script here and if we open this up you see that here we're just referencing that same enum in a get color text but well let's let's start at the top we cache our text mesh pro object right here in awake then we have a show damage method and this is what's getting called right shift f12 to find references see it's getting called in take damage after the damage is done so we go through we figure the resistance we get the multiplier we modify the amount, and then we adjust the health by that resisted multiplier. Then we call show, damage text show damage. We pass in that modified amount, not the original damage, and the damage type. Then in here, we're actually using this damage type in this get color text method. So we we get a string for the color text by calling this and passing in the damage type, and we just do a switch on the enum value. So if it's cold, we return color not or color equals blue. If it's red, we go to red. If it's physical, we go to white. If it's not something in our list, we just return back an empty string. So we should actually right here add in a case for our poison. So go poison, maybe return like a color equals purple. There we go. So now we have a special color for poison as well. And then let's just go back to our show damage. Here, once we've got the color, we set the text to the color text plus the amount. So this is saying, you know, our text is going to be color equals blue plus whatever that amount is, zero whenever we do cold damage. And then we kick off this little coroutine to fade the text up. It's literally just moving it up and then setting the text to empty after half a second. So nothing too special there. But it does, again, allow us to have a pretty flexible, pretty customizable setup where we just add an entry to an enum to add in a damage type. We don't have to add in anything special. We don't have to add in another um, scriptable object or anything like that. We just go straight to an enum. It's very easy to tell what's going on. And we can even get the name of the enum if we wanted to show it right here for the damage amount. In fact, why don't we? Let's go into our basic damage text here. And then when we set the text, we could also add in plus, uh, we go damage type dot or actually we'll do um, enum.getName, and then we pass in the type of the enum, so we do type of damage type, and then we give it the value, which is our damage type. In fact, I'm gonna pull this into a separate string to make it a little more obvious. And damage type name, there we go. And then we'll put that right here. So now it's just gonna say, hey, 
we're taking this amount of whatever it is. In fact, let's add a space here too. I feel like I should be doing some string formatting there, but this will be good enough. So now if we come back in, we should be able to see the damage type that was actually done. So it should say negative 10 fire uh, or 10 fire or zero cold or whatever it is. So here we go, we click two poison, two poison, two poison. Switch over to our weapon, change the damage type to fire, did five and fire, we'll do zero with cold. And again, there's no randomization, so we're getting the same number every time. And 10 physical damage, because we don't resist any of the physical damage. So again, this is just a small example of where you can use these enums. I use them all throughout code. Whenever I have something that needs to be, well, I guess defined in a way that's easy to understand, but um, not too complicated. So I don't want a whole class or anything like that. I just want a simple data type, this enum is, that allows me to select something or decide what an object is or what a thing is. Now, I also wanted to just bring up the fact that checking enums is dramatically faster than checking strings or objects or something else. So if we're doing that comparison and we can do it with an enum, it's gonna be dramatically faster. We're essentially just doing a check on a byte or an int. So it's relatively quick compared. And I've written a story a couple times before, told the story about one of the games that I worked on in the past that, well, it had terrible performance problems because when the UI code was written, it was done with a bunch of string comparisons so instead of an enum comparison for a different part to find a thing in the UI, it was using strings. And normally, probably not so bad, but it was doing them a million times a frame. So every frame it was comparing strings a million times, and that would, of course, just kill the performance of any system that was even the tiniest bit um, struggling for resources. So I even put together a real quick sample here just to show the difference in speed, comparing an enum to an enum versus a string to an enum. And you can see the class right here. So we have just in on enable, we call profile strings, profile enums. And we just do a real quick comparison, literally just doing an equals check on a string. So we set a string to cold, set a string to fire, and we loop through whatever, what is it set to a million times right now, and do a comparison and then increment a match count and then mark the amount of time. Stopwatch is great for that, by the way. You can just kick it off, start, and then stop at the end and figure out the amount of time passed. And then we do the same thing for enums. So exact same code, except here we use enums instead of strings. And if I run this here, let's just put in an empty game object and add our enum versus string test. Go to the console. Here you'll be able to see just kind of an idea of how much faster it is. And again, it doesn't really matter if these numbers are small. There we go, look at that. So 76 versus 413. So this, the number here doesn't matter so much as the scale difference. I'd say, in fact, the number is so small that if you're doing this once, it's not gonna matter at all. Of course, if you're doing this every frame, you'd be burning, what is that? Yeah, a good amount of time there. You you wouldn't wanna do this, what, what are we at now? A million string compares every frame, which again, exactly why that other game had a lot of problems much older hardware, this number was probably dramatically higher on a on an older system. Anyway, I hope this is somewhat helpful. It's supposed to be just an intro to enums, but I really just kind of wanted to dive in and show at least one real world example. Um, if this is helpful or you want to see other examples of how to use these, just let me know in the comments and I can probably pull up a couple other things that you can use these for and show them, I don't know, hopefully in a very helpful way. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your friends and that stuff, and uh, have a great day.